A pastor carries many duties, and one of those great duties is that of presenting the Word of God. As a pastor stands up to preach, one of the first things that is on his mind is how can I introduce this message to my congregation. Today we're going to talk about the pastor's greatest introduction, and that is his outward character. Welcome to the Better Sundays podcast, focused, practical, and usable advice for church leaders looking to reach new young families and impact their community. Well, howdy, 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 Mike Holmes here at ReachKeep.com. Today we are talking about the pastor and his preaching. I want to welcome you to our series here that we're doing. You can go back and watch the ones that we've already recorded or catch the ones that will be coming. But thank you for being involved with this. Uh, Today we're talking about the very important thing in the pastor's character as we go through this first portion of the nine fundamentals of pastoral preaching. We have some extra special Uh, training that we're doing, a Zoom training, and you can sign up for it here uh, and get on our wait list at reachkeep.com slash preaching. And we'd love to get you involved in some of the coaching that is more of a follow-up and in-depth of what we're talking about today. I want to jump right into our important topic here and just kind of cover portions of it. Again, we'll be spending most of our time with this training we're doing in a one-on-one or in a group coaching type format where we have you in a Zoom class and we're talking about these very uh, specific things that have to do with preaching. The first three that we're covering, the topics, have to do with the inward part of a pastor and how he views himself and how uh, he you know handles himself in his community. And as I mentioned, his outward character is one of the most important things uh, that he has that really introduces him to his community, to his congregation, and in his very real sense is the introduction to every sermon he ever preaches. Now, by the outward character, what we mean, is we have a word that we're using for this, and this is the idea of the container. If you've ever been to a restaurant and you've kind of picked up the glass and looked at it and, and it was dirty, uh, you're kind of it makes you wonder about the rest of the meal. It makes you wonder about the staff. It makes you wonder about their how they do their cleaning, all the different things there. And if a glass is dirty, it casts a certain viewpoint there. And there is an illustration here that needs to be stretched out, and that is that the pastor's character must be beyond reproach. We must make sure that... Our inward character, of course, is firmly committed to God and that we are holy on the inside and we are pure before God. But there's also a portion of our outward character that people see every day. And that's what we're going to talk about here at the Better Sundays podcast today. If this is important to you and you like this type of thing, we invite you to subscribe uh, here on our channel, whether you're watching this on YouTube or on one of our podcast channels on Google Podcasts or Apple Podcasts or Spotify. We're out there in a lot of places. We also ask that you would hit the like button, give us a share, and I really appreciate that. That kind of gets the word out to, uh, to more and more pastors. As we talk about the container, though, I think it's obvious that the container needs to be the right thing. The people will not necessarily like what is in the container. And there are times in your sermons where they're not going to like what you what you have to say. But they should know that the container is clean. Let me give you an example, uh, more of a restaurant type example. We kind of talk about food and things here uh, with this series. Uh, My wife likes to uh, eat uh, Thai food and there's a Thai restaurant uh, in our community and we've been to it uh, a few times. Now I'm not crazy about Thai food. Uh, I I managed to find some barbecued type thing that they have that I can handle. I can eat a few of the egg rolls and I'm good with that. Um, But I'm not crazy about the flavor and, and some of that that comes there. Um, But let me say something about their restaurant. It's clean. The people there are nice. They are kind. They are likable. Uh, the, everything is pretty well spotless. The menu is easy to read. The uh, uh, buffet thing that you go up to is well presented and all that. Now, there's things on there, again, that, that I wouldn't care for, but we need to make sure that we as pastors are above reproach in those areas. And I want to give you the what I call the, the KLT formula, just a real uh, simple formula here that kind of helps us with this idea 
of our character. A pastor, your very first sermon, your very first piece of your introduction is the outward things that people see. Now, I hope that they're going to pick up the inward things and and your walk with God, and some of that is going to kind of ooze out and come, but there are some outward things that are very important. And again, we call this the KLT format, and they're very simple things, and I'll just give you these in a simple order. The first one is that people need to know their pastor, okay? It, if they get to know you and they understand your you know, wife and your kids and your personality and who you are, I've been to churches before where someone got up to speak, and I I was visiting, of course, and, and I didn't even know if it was the real pastor. I didn't know who it was. I'd never seen a picture of their face. Maybe Make sure people know who you are. Introduce yourself as the senior pastor or, you know, if you're the assistant, say, hey, I'm the senior. It's good to have our senior pastor here, uh, you know, that type of thing. But make sure people are aware and they know you. There are plenty of ways in your illustrations that pastors can let people know what they're all about. They can talk about their stage of life and the things that they've gone through and, and their children and their grandchildren or their adult children or however that works, but let people get to know you. You don't have to go into nitty gritty details of all your, you know, your foibles and your sin and all, you know, that kind of stuff. Go where you want to with those illustrations, but, but just make sure that people get to know that it's something about you, where you were raised and how many brothers and sisters and all that. Be a knowable person, okay? Be someone that can know. And some of that is conversations with people, getting to know people in different ways. Uh, talking to them, making sure your website and some of your literature kind of talks about your background and where you're from. I recently visited a church and the background information on the pastor was extremely helpful. There was many things that we had in common as we were talking and I got to meet him. We got to talk and, and oh, I saw that you were born here and oh, I saw you went to school there and oh, I saw, you know, that your wife is from this community. You know, my family's from near that community as well. There was a lot of things and getting to know people is very, very important. You will have a better ministry, better sermons, better everything if people know who you are and they know a little bit about you. And adding to that is the second one is that is if they like you. Now, there's often pushback on this because we all know if you go around trying to be liked, what is going to happen, okay? That is not a good formula for success, but you ought to be likable, in other words, there ought to be some kindness. There ought to be some encouragement. There ought to be some things that, that come out of you. Uh, let me give you another example. I was uh, we do I do a little snow removal on the side. And we have a couple businesses that we uh, we plow snow for, and they're in the same parking lot. And there got to be a new manager in this one parking lot, and he was the most caustic, grumpy, complaining guy that I ever met. Okay, it, every time we'd go there, something was wrong. He was always talking about we weren't on time or we didn't do this or we didn't do that. It was terrible. The parking lot right next to him had a guy that was just the opposite. He said, man, I know you guys are busy, but thank you so much for taking care of our lot. And I really appreciate it. And they were getting the exact same treatment. Now, what I found about myself is that I no longer wanted to go to uh, Mr. Grumple Snort there. I didn't want to go to his store and even, I didn't even want to go shopping in his store anymore. And it's a very important store in our community, which I buy a lot of stuff at. And I found going to his competitors because I didn't want to be there because he was unlikable. He was unfriendly and he, he was caustic in, in so many ways. And I found that the other store, which I go to, I was attracted to that place because because of the friendliness and the kindness of the man that was there. Folks, you don't have to be caustic. You don't have to be, uh, you know, make people run. I have a pastor uh, in one of my churches. He, he, he brags about how hated he is in the community. And he says, when I walk down the street, people run away from me. They don't want to talk to me. And it was like, how sad is that? Okay. You can be and should be likable in your disposition. Now, there are going to be things that you preach that people will not like. There is no doubt about that. At our church, we've handled extremely tough topics and we have handled the, the hard ones and hit it hard, but they ought to 
still like me. In other words, the container ought to be clean and good. Someone might pour some, you know, Dr. Pepper into my glass, and I'm not a Dr. Pepper fan or whatever it happens to be, and I may not like that and may not want to drink it, but folks, the glass ought to be clean. And that is part of what we're going to be talking about and helping you specifically in these things as we go through our coaching. The last one in the KLT format is the idea of trust, that you will would be trustable, that your business dealings within the, uh, the community would be honest and up to speed, that you would pay your bills on time, that your church would pay its bills on time, that you would be someone that is honest, you'd be someone that is punctual, you'd be someone that keeps your word. All of those things are going to become the greatest introduction that you have ever had to your sermons. You want to... F- use this KLT format, this little formula, and you want to make sure that you are known of your people, that you are likable in the sense of your personality, and that you are trustable. So make sure that you kind of do that and you uh, respect this idea of the container. The container is so important as a pastor. And before you ever preach, what you are shouts loud, okay? It is your loudest and your first and your most important sermon uh, that you've ever had. Now, I want to invite you to join us in our next video as we go into one more secret about the inner part of a pastor that really helps us kind of grab hold and move forward. So make sure that you subscribe and that you're uh, watching for our mailings that come out that uh, introduce this thing, or just click the link, which will will take you uh, to the next one. If you are serious about your preaching, okay? If the things that you do, if you realize that you're one of the greatest skills that we do, one of the most important things we do as a pastor is stand up at the pulpit. We have some advanced training for you, and we would love to get you involved with that. You can go to reachkeep.com slash preaching, and we will get you on the wait list. We are be, we're going through this series in a very uh, simple way on our podcast first, and then uh, we are going to be preaching this and, or teaching and going through and doing this in a coaching format. If you've never been coached, if you've never had someone that sits and talks to you and kind of helps you through things, let me say something. It is a tremendous experience. Uh, I spend all sorts of time on the phone coaching pastors. We do a lot of Zoom calls. In fact, our entire uh, thing that we're doing here, the pastor and his preaching, uh, this course that we're offering is a Zoom-based coaching where we will meet with you one-on-one or in a group format and really a little of both. And we're going to talk and we're going to ask you questions and and we're going to go through those things. And and I wrote a couple questions down that I wanted to, you know, that we will include in our thing. Uh, uh, For example... um, um, do you like to be um, do you like to be uh, around folks that you don't like? Okay, very simple question. Do you like to be around folks you don't like? No, I mean I, I don't want to be with the guy that's Mr. Grump. Okay, I, I don't even want to go in a store. I don't even want to be close. Okay. And that's a very important thing. So if you don't like that, then let's make sure that we're kind of doing something about that in our church. And again, it's not any compromise of the word. It's just making sure that you're you're friendly and you're kind. Uh, I wrote another one. Uh, Have you ever had your trust broken? And I think every one of us have been in a scenario once or twice where our trust has been broken. Have you ever had your trust broken? What caused that? How did you feel? We're going to cover some of those in much more detail. So we are wanting to invite you to make sure that you go uh, and take a look at, again, go to reachkeep.com slash preaching. Let's preach better. Let's be absolutely the best we can be. Uh, Sign up for that there, and we will be in touch with you and let you know how all of that works. So anyway, thanks for being with us here as we uh, work our way through the pastor and his preaching. The nine fundamentals of effective pastoral preaching are so important important and we've made it through a couple of them here make sure that you follow the links and stick with us and we will get you through the rest of them so thanks for being with us here at the better sundays podcast at reachkeep.com